Welcome, friends, to Grace Baptist Church. This is our Wednesday night service. We're here from the church, and this is February the 3rd, February the 3rd, first week of February, and we're just delighted to be able to come to you by the means of uh, internet. Hope you're having a great day. It's a little bit nippy out there today. Have to have a coat or a jacket on. That wind will cut you. But it's that time of the year, and here we are in February. <laughs> Long overdue, probably for some bad weather. I, we didn't get to come Sunday morning. We had some ice around here, and boy, I sure missed our people. I hope, hope we'll have a good uh, Sunday this week. But anyway, we're glad to be back on Wednesday night. And uh, if you have your Bible, I'd like you to turn with us, Proverbs chapter 13. And we're looking at... The how to follow the Lord closely, submitting ourselves unto Him. The Bible talks about if we submit ourselves unto God, then He will exalt us in due time. There's some blessings to following God, submitting ourselves to Him. And so that's what we're going to see here in Numbers chapter number 13. And we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 3. The wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressors shall eat violence. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we get back into our message. Father, come tonight and fill us afresh. Fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. Teach us things out of your word that will help us as we grow, as we learn from you. Father, we pray that the message will be a help, a strength to each one listening. And I pray that, God, that we will realize that when we submit ourselves under your leadership, we have the best life possible. We have the friend that never leaves us, nor forsakes us. So we ask, thank you for this time that we can be together. Fill us all with your precious Holy Spirit. Bless those who are looking on, who are sick and afflicted. Touch them and heal them. The big one listening who has never come to Christ, I pray today will be the day of salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as we look at this passage here, as we started it last week, we're thinking about Solomon training his son Rehoboam for the kingdom. And we know that Rehoboam was going to succeed Solomon, didn't do a very good job. He didn't listen to what Solomon tried to tell him. It says in verse 1, the, the wise son hears his father's instruction. And that's not always easy to do as a child, but it's always the right thing to do when mom and dad are trying to steer you in the right direction. You know, you have peer pressure. You have others who are saying, well, come with us or let's do this. And you know, mom and dad wouldn't approve of it. And uh, it even happens to adults as well. There's a lot of peer pressure. Every age has its own type of temptation. But then the scorner, Heareth not rebuke. There are people that will not listen to any kind of rebuke, any kind of correction. And God wants us to be very willing to submit ourselves unto the word of God. He gives us a word it's called the Bible. And the Bible will teach us how to live. The Bible will teach us how to grow if we'll only follow the Bible. So we talked about the, the two. The wise son always listens to mom and dad, always heeds the direction. And we could carry it on a step further. The wise Christian listens to God. We have a heavenly father. We have a word of God he's left us. And so we get our strength and we get our help. And we get our direction and our wisdom from seeking the word. And praying and asking God to teach us the Bible as we study it. And so he goes on and explains here that 
if you will follow the Lord and you'll see that God has a supernatural wisdom and he has the ability to look out into the future. We don't, but he does. He knows what's behind every corner. He knows where the booby traps are that Satan throws out to try to bring you down. God will empower you. God will instruct you. I'm not sure Solomon was David's favorite son. I know he was one of his favorite sons. But I will say this, Solomon did listen to him. And so he was an example of what he's trying to teach his son Rehoboam. He tries to teach Rehoboam. It's very same principle about listening to authority. And yet Rehoboam would not do it. He listened to the young man. He listened to his buddies who said, look, you make life tough on these people. You let them know who's the boss. You be a dictator. Because the people came to Rehoboam after Solomon passed away. And they said, listen, if you will work with us, we'll work with you. And if you'll help us, we'll help you. And what that's a great opportunity that Rehoboam missed out on. If he would have only listened to what his daddy tried to teach him. And so it ended up costing him most of his kingdom. Ten out of the twelve tribes turned on him. He only got to rule two out of the twelve tribes of Israel. And so we do know that at least Solomon tried to listen to David and hear his instructions. And yet Rehoboam is the example of the scorner who would not listen. He's the example of the dark, negative side. The Proverbs always compares the righteous and the unrighteous, the wise and the foolish, the evil, wicked, and the just, the good. Let me ask you a question. Are you intelligent, skillful, artful enough to listen to the wise words of those who are in authority? And they're trying to help you. Uh, it goes for your parents, goes for law enforcement, spiritual leaders, anybody who has your best interest at heart, they don't want to stand by idly and watch you wreck and ruin your life. They love you too much. They want to tell you the truth in love so that they can help you. It's kind of like a two-edged sword. It, it might cut, but it's going to cut the bad out and put the good in. I know that any parent who loves a child is going to try to point that child in the right direction. That parent's going to try to warn that child about the wrong person at the wrong time. We've all probably had that happen. <laughs> I used to get whoopings, not just whippings, whoopings. That's even worse. But I deserved them, and I'm glad my mom and dad would love me enough to discipline me. So we're going to move on here. Look at verse, well, let's see, latter part of verse number one here. A wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. Now the scorner, he doesn't want any advice. He doesn't want any instruction. He even gets mad when you try to correct him or help him. You know anybody like that? They know it all and you can't teach them anything. You try to warn them about the errors of the world and the ways of Satan and the temptations and trials of sin. They don't want to hear about that. Don't preach to me, they say. Don't judge me. And we're not the judge. God is our judge. But it just seems like there are some people that will not listen not only to us, but they will not listen to God as good as God has been to them, to give them life, to give them a, a, a place to live, to let them be born, I think, in the greatest country in all the world. Sure, we've got a lot of problems, but I still wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Thank God for America. You know anybody that just seems like trouble follows him, follows her? 
I mean, I'm sure that even the best Christian has troubles and trials that come our way. But if we'd all be honest, sometimes we bring it on ourselves by not listening to what God's trying to teach us, by being stubborn, maybe even defiant to the truth of our parents or those in authority. And when we're defiant and when we are rebellious, it always means we're going to pay a heavy price. And so the word for scorner, when you see that in verse number one, Proverbs chapter 13, the scorner heareth not rebuke. That's a primitive word. And it properly means to make mouth sad, to scoff, to interpret, to intercede, to have in derision, to mock or scorn. Do you know anyone who makes mouth sad or mouths off at their parents, teenagers, employers, anybody else in authority? Do you know anyone who scoffs at and mocks and Scorn those who are only trying to help them from right to wrong. That's a foolish person. And friends, that person has a hard time listening to the voice of God, heeding the instructions of those in authority. God's put them there for a purpose. He gave us the Bible to show us the way to heaven. He gave us our parents to keep us out of a lot of trouble to teach us the ways of life. He gives us spiritual teachers and preachers to help us increase in our knowledge of the word. He gives us authoritative law enforcement uh, to keep us from doing wrong and harming others and also to protect us from those who would harm us. Thank the Lord, he never gives up on us. And so sometimes if we're not careful, we give up on him. And the result is always sad. So, which will it be? Are you going to listen to God? Or are you going to turn your back upon God? Going to reject his advice? Travel down that long, rough road of destruction? Seems like catastrophe after catastrophe after catastrophe. Maybe the Lord's trying to get somebody's attention. So the choice is ours to make. We have to determine, Lord, I'm going to follow you in all things. And especially I want you to use my parents, if they're still alive, to help me. I want you to use godly leaders and godly teachers and godly friends who can add wisdom into my life. And Lord, don't throw me in the fire. Just let me learn before you have to do that. Amen and glory to God. Thank the Lord for his patience. Thank God for the love of parents. You may be old enough to be out of the house and out on your own, but always treasure the wonderful wisdom God gave you through your parents. And always cherish this wonderful book called the Bible. That leads you away from the pitfalls of life and it points you down the right road to everlasting life. Then look at verse number two, Proverbs 13, two. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressors shall eat violence. The soul of the transgressor shall eat violence. What is he saying there, friends? Well, he's trying to teach us a good person has a way of speaking good words to those around him or her, and that wins him many blessings, many friendships. The reason so many times we don't have as many friends as we'd like to is because we're not friendly to people. You know, the Bible, very easy to understand, says a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. <laughs> pretty, pretty easy to understand. If we're not friendly, we're not going to have many friends. If we're always cutting others down or making fun of others, or talking mean to others, you're not going to have many friends. I'm not going to have many friends. If we try to bully people, that's just going to harm relationships. But a good person, they know how to encourage you. They know how to give you support. They know how to pray for you, lift you up, make you have a 
a good day instead of a deep, dark, depressed day. There's so many wonderful, wonderful people of God he has placed in my life that I enjoy being around. It's just a pleasure. They love God, and they love me, and they want to help me, and I try my best to want to help them. But on the other hand, the deceitful person, oh, they're going to get into trouble with harmful words. Many times it leads to violence. It leads to bullying. You know anybody's always using their words to bring on hostility? Oh, maybe they love to fight and cause trouble. They'll fight at the drop of the hat and drop the hat to get to fight. <laughs> and that type of person usually doesn't have many friends because they're even mean to their own family. Most of the time, they're on acquaintances. They go through life pushing and shoving everybody to get their selfish needs met. And yet, that's an empty, unhappy way to live. What's the answer? Well, the answer is found in the next verse. Notice a very important piece of advice here in verse number three. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. Now the word for keepeth, he says he that keepeth his mouth shall keep his life. That means to guard in a good sense. It means to protect what we say. It means to keep back when we want to spout off. <laughs> and then the second word there for keepeth actually carries the idea to, to properly hedge about. Like thorns and uh, something that would put a hedge up. So we could say the person who guards what he says, he's going to put a hedge around his life like thorns or even a moat around a castle, surrounding that castle. It's a safeguard to say the right things instead of saying the wrong things. It brings safety. It brings protection just by trying to say the right words, trying to use good common sense to encourage those around us. You ever been with somebody and they've always caused them trouble? Then they end up pulling you in with them. For you know what, you're both in a fight with somebody else or two or three others. <laughs> it does happen from time to time. That's what God's saying here. Be very, very careful that you follow with godly people who use their words to build up and edify and appreciate. The word appreciate means to lift the value up. I mean, the word depreciation means you literally are pushing their value down. So when you appreciate a person, you're lifting their value up. Not only to them, but to you and to everybody around them. Makes them feel much better about a situation. The person who can learn to control what they say, it's always going to be in demand. People want to be around that type of person. Why? Because they're an encourager. They want to be around encouragers. There may have been times in life when just the wrong word at the wrong time to the wrong person could actually cost another person their life. And it can happen. Oh, the power of the tongue. The Bible talks so many, so many ways about it. But that one who is wise enough to guard and use their words very carefully to think before he or she speaks, they're going to have a blessed life. That's what it says. It's just like protection in your life when you use good words. What we sow, we reap. If we sow good words, we get good words back. If we sow wicked, bad words, they're going to come back as well. So controlled words leads to a long, happy life, while reckless words leads to ruin and destruction. Heard about a lady. She was walking down the street to work, and she saw a parrot a talking bird, a parrot, on a perch in front of a pet store. <laughs> and the parrot said to her, hey, lady, you are really ugly. <laughs> well, that lady was furious. She stormed right into the store and told him what had happened and then stormed out of that store and 
told her husband on the way home what had happened. He said, I'll take care of it. Well, the next day she came by. Hey, lady, you're really ugly. And boy, this, you really got mad. This is the second time. It just ticked her off even more. She went in there and she told that storekeeper, I'm going to sue you. And I'm going to kill that bird if you don't stop him. <laughs> so the manager says, okay, I promise you he'll never say it again. So she walked out the door and she thought the next day, I wonder what that bird's going to say. She went down past the pet shop and there he was sitting out there on the perch. She was wondering, is he going to call me ugly again or what? And so she gets up close and comes right up past the bird and looks at him and the bird said, hey lady. <laughs> she thought, here it comes. What do you want? Hey, lady. <laughs> you know. <laughs> That's what he said. You know. <laughs> he didn't have to say it, did he? That can get you in a whole lot of trouble. She may have got a hold of him and strangled him after that. Well, anyway, use your words to build up others. Use your words to help those around you. Submit to the Lord. He'll give you wisdom. And using the right words at the right time for the right person to be helped. Thank you again. I appreciate you tuning in. These studies in the book of Proverbs, they're so practical. And yet they're right there in the Bible. And I hope it's a blessing to you. We're going to finish with prayer. Father, again, we thank you for letting us be together. Bless the ones listening. I pray that God, we will use our words to build up and encourage those around us. It's so easy to get caught up in gossip and mean talk and even curse words and things of that nature. And Father, we know that it doesn't bring you any honor and glory, especially for the child of God. Help us, Lord, to guard our mouth and guard our lips and guard our speech. Give us the right words to say that we can encourage and lift up those around us. And Lord, thank you for all the encouragement you give us. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again, friends, for tuning in to the Grace Baptist Church. Come see us. We'll be here, Lord willing, this Sunday morning, 10 o'clock.